Okay, so back to the hash functions. These two hash functions, if you can see this, A3 and A8, are both based on one particular hash algorithm known as COMP128. Okay, and this COMP128, again, was you know, built in violation of Kirchhoff's principle and was found to be very insecure once people started looking at it. And you can break it with 160,000 known, uh, chosen plain text. Okay, now back to this picture. What that means is if Trudy could somehow choose the random value and see the corresponding value that comes back, and she could do that 160,000 times, she could recover the key KI. How practical is that? And Trudy doesn't get to choose those, right? She doesn't get to see 160,000 in her lifetime, right? So it's just never going to happen. Unless you could bake the base station. Okay, so if you could bake the base station, you might be able to actually do that. But that's a lot of times, 160,000 times. Um, and in fact, it takes, Tim says, it takes uh, two to 10 hours to get that much information out of one of these uh, phones. That's a long time, right, to just be sitting there you know, doing this. Um, but is there anybody else? Is there anybody who might have the phone for long enough to actually do an attack like this? where they could put values in and see what values come out for two to 10 hours. Whoever sold you the phone, right? They probably had it laying around for days. They might have just, I mean, in principle, they could have you know, done this attack and figured out what KI is and created a clone of your phone before they sold it to you. And they can get all the free phone calls they want. Okay, so at least in principle, that could, could work. Okay, another flaw with GSM is we talked about the base station. Right, so you've got this air interface where you contact the base station. Then the base station talks to the base station controller. Now, when the, they designed GSM, they assumed that the, that the communication between the base station and the base station controller would take place over a regular telephone line. So since it's happening over a regular telephone line, what protection do we have to apply? None. Okay, so there's no protection there. As it turned out, uh, people who built these systems found it was more efficient to use a microwave link, okay, to connect the base station controller to the, to the base station. What does that mean, microwave? That's something you send over the air. That means somebody can, in principle, intercept that, right? Easier than a regular phone call. It's more difficult than, a, you know, the, the air interface because microwave is more directional and stuff like that, but still you're sending it over the air, so it kind of, you know, violates one of their assumptions here. So, and it's possible for somebody to get access to that. Okay, now the encryption itself uh, is done with this A51 algorithm, which is considered pretty insecure. There's an attack developed by Shamir, of course, that uh, claims to only take two seconds of known plain text, and you can recover the keys. Uh, the SIM, SIM cards uh, used in early versions of uh, GSM phones had some serious problems. There were uh, attacks that, you know, sort of you could, in, you could create faults in the SIM card and it would basically, you know, regurgitate the key for you. Um, and some of those were pretty fast. You know, some of them only took like uh, eight chosen plain text pairs, okay? So this is not 160,000, okay? This is eight. <laughs> This means if you lose your phone for you know a couple of minutes, somebody could have you know figured out what the key is in that short of the time. Uh, okay, kind of my favorite attack is the fake base station attack. So uh, there's two two factors that this relies on. Okay, one is the encryption between the mobile and the base station is not automatic, and in fact the base station gets to decide whether it's encrypted or not. Believe it or not. And you have no way to know. As the holder of the phone, you don't know whether it's encrypted or not. The base station decides if it's encrypt or not. And the base station is not authenticated. OK, so suppose Trudy shows up here with a fake base station. Now, I mean, this looks like kind of a serious flaw when we see this. But at the time they were designing GSM, they assumed this was totally impractical. Because to build a real base station costs hundreds of thousands of dollars, right? So to build a fake one, nobody's going to do that. Today, it's not so impractical. You can go to Radio Shack, give them 20 bucks, you got your fake radio station. I don't know, it's a little more than that, but it's not, uh, it's not uh, difficult. Okay, so the mobile shows up and it sends its uh, MC, right? Okay, now you're sitting here as the fake base station, you supply the random challenge. What does the mobile do with it? 
hashes it, computes that S res thing, sends it back. What do you do with that? You throw it in the trash because you don't care, right? Okay, you're not going to authenticate this person. Now you say, hey, by the way, mobile, let's don't bother to encrypt. <laughs> now what? Well, now you get to listen to the phone call. Now on the back end, you have to take whoever they're calling to, right, and patch through the call, right? Okay, so let's just suppose, just for fun, this is actually a GSM call back here as well. So they patch it through, and now they can listen in on the phone call, right? It's going back and forth. Okay, now here's a question. In this picture here, you make a call, it actually goes through, you get to talk to who you want to talk to, and who gets the bill for this call? Fake base station. The fake base station gets the call, because it actually placed the call, you know, it's yeah. just sitting here like a proxy for you, right? So you could actually detect this call. If you looked very closely at your bill and you saw you were not charged for a call and you went and complained to this carrier that you were not charged for this call. Nobody's going to do that. <laughs> Nobody's going to do that. Right. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay, there's some other issues uh, with the security here. Uh, denial of service, that's kind of a generic thing with uh, wireless, right? You can always create some sort of denial of service problem. Uh, but this is kind of a serious uh, protocol issue. Now, the RAND, XRES, and the key K sub C, those are computed at the home network, right? And they're sent just over a regular telephone line. Someone could be listening in on that telephone conversation, right? And if they are, they would get this triple. Now, if somebody gets this triple, what could they do? Well, they could set up the fake base station just like we had in the previous slide, but they could make it even better. How could it be better? Use the same show and the same key. Use the encryption, right? Don't say no encryption, say encryption because you know the key that's going to be used for encryption. That's pretty good because now you can listen and nobody else can listen, right? And even better, even better is the fact that you can reuse this triple as the attacker. There's nothing to prevent you from reusing this triple. So you do have sort of replay protection and that you give a random challenge and all that, but if the base station is not legitimate, he can replay triples forever, okay? So that's a pretty serious issue. <laughs> you get one triple, you're good to go. All right. Okay, so what's the bottom line on all this uh, GSM stuff? So uh, did it achieve its goal? Okay, what, what were the goals again? Make it as secure as a regular phone call. And what else? Prevent cloning. Prevent cloning. Okay, so how about as secure as a regular phone call? Is this thing as secure as a regular phone call? No. Well, I don't know. Okay, that's debatable. How about the cloning? Is this the, did this, did this, does this prevent cloning? It's certainly more difficult than with the first generation phones. You can't say it prevents it because we saw lots of attacks where you could, you know, conceivably clone the phone. There's attacks on the SIM card and stuff like that. You know, the hash functions are weak and all that. But as a practical matter, it never affected the business of GSM. It was never it may have happened on occasion, but it wasn't like it cost cut into their, you know, profits. So as a practical matter, it probably did succeed, at least in that regard. Okay, so I think you could say it prevented cloning as a practical matter. But how about this? The air interface is as uh, secure as the public switch telephone network. Um, you know, you have to think a little bit uh, about the comparisons here. I mean, GSM certainly has a lot of problems, you know, crypto weaknesses, SIM cards. Uh, problems, fake base stations, and so on, replay, all that stuff. Those are serious issues. But if you look at a regular phone call, right, I mean, there are attacks there as well. Okay, people can tap your telephone call legally or not. There are various active and passive attacks, uh, things like a, a cordless phone, okay, those are notorious for uh, having problems. So there are potential attacks there. So, you know, was it as secure as a regular phone call? You know, it's debatable. Okay. Now, um, contrary to what you might read, if you go online, look up information on GSM security, you know, people will just rip it, you know, all these problems, all these security problems. You know, I think you can actually make the case that GSM was sort of a modest security success. Okay. I mean, it achieved the goal of creating a you know, usable, uh, financially profitable system. Okay. 
Uh, okay, so what comes after uh, GSM? Um, this group, 3G, PP. What are we up to? How many Gs are we up to now? 4G, 5G, 6G? I don't know. But anyway, 3G uh, security. Uh, it may seem kind of surprising, uh, but the 3G security model was built on top of the GSM security model. Okay, so they basically took the security uh, architecture of GSM and modified it to fix the known flaws, and then they called it 3G security. Now, why would you do that? Okay, you know, suppose you're you're asked to design the security for this 3G phone system. Isn't GSM the last place you would go? Look at all these problems they had with GSM. Why would you do that instead of just starting over from scratch and designing a really good security protocol? Yeah, yeah, okay, so it's sort of like, you know, the devil you know versus the devil you don't, right? If you start over from scratch, you may end up with serious problems there. If you're starting with something you already know what the problems are, if you patch all the known problems, you know, you may actually have an advantage uh, by, by doing that. So they fix the known problems, in particular, mutual authentication. So you authenticate the, you also authenticate the base station, not just the client, not, not just the uh, mobile. Uh, you authenticate both. Okay, you integrity protect the signaling. Things like start encryption, okay? So the base station can't just say, oh, don't bother to encrypt this uh, particular message. Uh, the keys and such can't be reused, that's good. Can't replay that triple forever if you get one of those guys. Uh, same thing there. And the encryption algorithms, the hash functions and encryption algorithms are strong. They're things that were out there in the public domain, people analyzed for years, it did not break Kirchhoff's principle with this. And the encryption goes all the way to the base station controller, <laughs> and it doesn't skip that uh, link there. Okay, so any questions about GSM? Are there any known attacks on 3G? Oh, uh, that's a good question. I, I don't know, I mean, I haven't, looked at it that closely, but I haven't certainly heard of anything. So I don't think as a you know, sort of major attacks, I don't think so. Maybe some sort of theoretical uh, or ideas out there. No, not that I know. Um, okay, so just a quick reminder here of what we covered in this chapter. Um, we looked at, uh, the, in the previous chapter, we looked at the generic authentication protocols. But here, uh, we start off with SSH, which is you know, it's a pretty nice protocol. It's, you know, uh, you, can, you can get your mind around SSH. It's not really uh, that complex. Some of the other modes we didn't talk about where you can use, uh, you know, public keys or you can use uh, passwords. They're a little more interesting in the sense that, you know, some uh, poten potential vulnerabilities open up there. As hopefully you will see when you do the homework or have seen as you get the homework. Um, SSL. Um, is again a very nice protocol designed to solve a particular problem, you know, secure transactions on the web, does it very well, you know, does what uh, needs to be done. There's another mode of SSL we didn't talk about. There's a, a so-called anonymous mode of SSL. And it's anonymous in a different sense. Uh, it's anonymous in the sense that you don't have to know who you're talking to. Now think about it. How can you authenticate somebody if you don't know who you're talking to? Well, they don't authenticate. So it's kind of weird. It's basically they do uh, Dippy Hellman and they establish a key, but you don't know who you're talking to. So, you know, some people, some, sometimes people mistakenly use that as an authenticate because it's called SSL, right? So it must be secure, but it has no authentic, basically no authentication at all. So be careful. <laughs> uh, okay, IPSAC. Uh, we spent a long time talking about IPSAC. Um, you know, it's a big involved protocol, but it's not that bad if you break it down into little component pieces and keep track of each of those separately. You know, it, it, it I mean, I've been teaching this a long time. It kind of makes sense to me. You know, I hope it kind of makes sense to you. Spend some time on it. Uh, it's not that bad. Uh, Kerberos, this is a good one. It's different. You know, it involves uh, symmetric keys, involves timestamps, um, and very widely used protocol. So it's a good one to, to, to know about as well. Uh, the wireless protocols, GSM and WEP, uh, lots of flaws in those guys. 